Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'll be discussing some important questions for your upcoming practical examination viva. In the last video, I have discussed about the practicals such as your glass lab, prism, and your magnets. In this video, I'll be focusing on electrical experiments. If you have not watched my previous video, then please go to that video. The link has been given in the description box. So let us start today's video. When you are doing an electrical experiment, there are three meters that you will be using. The first is your ammeter, voltmeter, and then your is a galvanometer. An external might come to you and he might ask you a question. Then what do you, what do is the task of a galvanometer? Then you give him a simple answer. The galvanometer is used to detect the flow of current. Whether the current is flowing or not, what is the direction of current? That is detected by a galvanometer. Then comes what is the work of an ammeter. Ammeter is used to measure the current. It measures the current. Whereas the voltmeter, it measures the voltage. Now there is one more common question that can you convert a galvanometer into an ammeter or a voltmeter? Yes, it can be done. If you want to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter, you need to connect a very low resistance in parallel with the galvanometer. Why we do so? What is the reason of doing it? The reason is that every galvanometer can take up only a fixed value of current or voltage. If you give the voltage or current, if the input voltage or current is more than the rated value, then the galvanometer will get burned. So to restrict it, what we do, we bypass the current so that the minimum amount of current passes through the galvanometer and the maximum passes through the low resistance so that current can easily pass through. So in this way, you can convert a galvanometer into an ammeter. Next, whenever you are doing an electrical circuit, the most important thing is to make an electrical circuit. When designing the electrical circuit, keep two very important things in mind. When you connect the ammeter, the ammeter is always connected in series with the resistance. And the voltmeter is always connected in parallel with the resistance. These two are very very important in any electrical circuits you make. May it be meter bridge, may it be potentiometer, voltage divider or your diode experiments. Whichever experiments you do, you need to always connect the ammeter in series and the galvanic sorry, and the voltmeter in parallel. That's very important. Next question may be asked to you that what is the function of a rheostat? The answer is very simple. Rheostat is used to control the flow of current. But by just sliding it, you can control how much current you are giving to the circuit. Then the next question may be asked, what is the task of the commutator? If you remember when you do the meter bridge or potential meter experiment, you use a four key device which is called the commutator. It is mainly used, the main function of this commutator is to reverse the flow of current. Say while taking one measurement, the current is flowing in clockwise direction. If you want to reverse the flow, you can do it using a commutator. You just flip the keys and the current will flow in the reverse direction. That is the work of a commutator. Next, when you are doing experiments with meter bridge or potentiometer, okay, when I am telling meter bridge potentiometer, let me cover this part also. Now, why is the meter bridge called the meter bridge and not something else? And if you have noticed, the meter bridge, the spelling is M-E-T-R-E. -E. Why is it called meter? The meter is in real length. The specific reason is that the wire which we are using in the experiment that is specifically of 1 meter. For that reason it is called a meter bridge and it is based on the principle of Wichstone bridge. Now what was Wichstone bridge or rather what is Wichstone bridge? Wichstone bridge is just an electrical circuit. The design you might have remember in, and the Wichstone said that there is a principle which says that if the current to the galvanometer, in a circuit we have a galvanometer, if the current to the galvanometer is zero, then the ratio of the arms, the ratio of the resistances of the arms, P by Q and R by S, they are equal. Then moving forward, you will, you will also have an experiment on potentiometer. Now what is the basic difference between a meter bridge and a potentiometer? The main difference is that in a meter bridge, the wire is of one meter length. Whereas in a potentiometer, the wire may be of 1 meter, it may be 2 meter, 3 meter. Generally, in practical purposes, we use of 10 meters. Now, what is the main function of a meter bridge and what is the main function of a potentiometer? The main function of a meter bridge is to measure the unknown resistance. Whereas the main function of a potentiometer is to measure the unknown EMF of a cell. So, to measure the unknown EMF, we use potentiometer and to measure the unknown resistance, we use the meter bridge. Then when you are doing the electrical experiments, you must have used the cell. Uh, in, a, in a container which is called a Laclan cell. It has two electrodes, one will be the anode, one will be the cathode. The external will just point on any one of them and ask you which one is cathode, which one is anode. Just remember that the thick one the, the, that is made of carbon, that is your cathode and the thin one which is made of zinc is your anode and the solution out there is your ammonium chloride solution. Just remember these ingredients, these are very important, this is the most common question that is asked in electrical experiments. It will directly come and point to you, point you to the Laclan cell and ask you what are what is there inside the Laclan cell, explain it to me. So just explain it, that the cathode is your carbon, the anode is your zinc rod, the fine 
thin rod and the solution is a ammonium chloride solution then coming to ohm's law there might be a question that what are the limitations of ohm's law which you know very well then what are the devices which do not follow ohm's law very strictly one of the common example is a diode or transistor you also have an experiment on diode so in diode the questions might be asked that what is forward bias what is reverse bias forward bias means when the current flows and reverse bias when we are blocking the current Now remember one thing here. Whenever we say forward bias, reverse bias, two types of current are always there. One is a forward current, another is a reverse situation current. Now, what is reverse situation current? That's a common question. The forward current that we get is due to the full flow of the majority charge carriers, whereas the reverse situation current that you get is due to the flow of the minority charge carriers. This is very very important for you to know. There is one more question that might be asked in your exam. Uh, is there any other instrument which follows the Wittgenstein bridge principle? The answer is post office box. Post office box is a instrument that also follows the Wittgenstein bridge principle. It is also used to find the value of the unknown resistance. If the unknown resistance is very very low, then it is done by using a post office box. Generally, I don't think you have done this in a practical, but you should know this that there are also other instruments which are based on the principle of Wittgenstein bridge. When you are doing the diode experiment, some common questions are. What do you mean by barrier potential? What is the meaning of your depletion region? And what is the effect on the barrier potential and depletion region when you do forward biasing and reverse biasing? Please go to the definitions of this of what is the barrier potential, what is the depletion region. The definitions you dictate in the exam that will be enough. Now, what is the effect on on these during the forward biasing and reverse biasing? During forward biasing, the depletion regions get shorter and the barrier potential decreases. Whereas in reverse biasing, the barrier potential increases and the width of the depletion region increases. For that reason, there is no flow of current in the reverse in the reverse biasing. So, guys, that's all in this video. I hope I have covered most of the questions that were most probable for your viva. I won't say I have covered all the all the questions, but yes, I have covered the most important questions that are generally asked in the viva. And I will also advise you to also read your books so that if there is any question outside this, so you can answer those also. I hope you have liked my video, and I also hope that the time you have used here in watching my video becomes fruitful, and these questions are asked to you in the viva. Thank you.